right, ready? Let's go. Finger gun salute! <laughs> the best. Hey. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Between the Post. These are your hosts, Chris Turner. And Jess Dombrowski, here I am. The Jess Dombrowski. <laughs> yes, with a capital T, please. <laughs> Always capital T-H-E. Come yes. On. Anyway, so welcome back. We have a lot of things to go over, mm -hmm. kind of recapping this past weekend in rugby in general within USA Rugby or collegiate community or club atmospheres and everything else in between. Uh, so yeah, anyway, our first topic and here it is. Um, I think if you guys have been watching lately, we were talking about our national development tours put on by our training and education department. Um, we had one this past weekend in Norman, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and from what I hear, it was highly successful. There was a player camp being run in conjunction with it. Um, you know, we had a couple coaches get registered, we had referees get registered, and we were pretty excited about how that actually transpired. And I was talking with Carissa of our education department, who was on site all weekend, and you know, she was just saying it was really energizing to see how many people were like invested in the organization mm -hmm. and wanting to get these certifications and you know, we're even asking about, okay, well, what's next? Like, now that I have this, even though I've had it for a day, like, what can right. I do next? So, right. um, I don't know, it's kind of cool to, like, see that that many people are still kind of on the up and up for, for new things. And looking forward with that, at the end of the month, uh, we have our next NDT National Development Tour in... Portland, Oregon. Yes, and that is the weekend of the 24th and 25th. Um, and 26th. And 26th, that's right, it's a yep. three-day one. Three-day. Wow. Yeah, Triple threat. Um, <laughs> so we have the level one officiating course, the level 200 coaching course, level 300 coaching course. There's continuing education. There's strength and conditioning. So basically, if you're involved in rugby, you should be there. Um, Rob Kane's going to be there. Lee mm -hmm. Bryant. You know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to have some of those really developing conversations with these higher ranking people. And I don't know. I just think it's going to be really cool brainstorming brain blend session so kind of wish i could be there but right gotta stay here in colorado someone's gotta hold down the fort hey, so <laughs> there's many opportunities um in the next not only spring but falling into the summer which yeah. all those dates all those locations will be on the ndt uh tab and section of the usa rugby Absolutely. website which we will plug at the bottom but yeah please check out portland oregon january 24th through 26th weekend yeah there's gonna be a lot of people there so be one of them. <laughs> Other from this weekend, we had a lot of games going on, I think, right? Yeah, a lot of games. So right into the kind of the meat of my <laughs> yeah. of my passion day -day. is the uh, yeah day to day too is the <laughs> college and club news. So I'm just gonna kind of read a few things off, but there's only really two college games that went down. This past weekend, it was St. Mary's versus mm -hmm. UC Davis in D1A. Yeah. St. Mary's came away with an astonishing 97 to 0 win. Um, and then on the women's side of things, Cal Poly took on UC Santa Cruz, and Cal Poly went away with that victory 71-7. to So some pretty lopsided uh, yeah. victories here in the, the start of the season at least, but as they get into their meat of their schedule, we could see a lot more quality and closer games mm -hmm. heading into that. But a lot of these are kind of tune-ups and uh, just kind of dusting off the old cobweb, so to speak. So, so I guess because you – follow all of these teams throughout their whole mm -hmm. season. What is it that you can kind of expect? You said, you know, quality, quantity of these games and mm -hmm. the scores and whatnot. What is like a, a common theme maybe that you kind of see teams changing? Is it the speed of play? Is it the aggression? Is it structure, strategy? Like what is it that you can predict is going to happen this season for some of these teams? It's oh, a great question. And to be honest, I feel like uh, a lot of it just generally kind of encompasses improvement overall. Yeah. So if a lot of these clubs are just playing their first season in these higher levels... Dusting some cobwebs off. Not only going to dust some cobwebs off, but they might run into some teams that could be a buzzsaw and you could see some of these, you know, potential 70, 90 point victories. Yeah. But then over the years, they understand what competition that they're playing within. They understand how hard they have to work, what type of recruitment they have to do Adapting. to kind of play it and adapt, yes, at yeah. those levels. So for uh, for this season, there's not too many teams that went up a league. Okay. But there is one to keep your eye on for the future, and they made a quick couple jumps. It was Iowa City. Oh, yes. It was Iowa Central, Central. Community College. Mm -hmm. They were originally D two last year, jumped up to D one double A. Yeah. Kind of near or just before the playoffs, ended up winning the championship game by a sturdy amount. Uh, and then they're, I know from now they're going to be staying in D1AA, but who knows? They could be D1A in the next year or so. That's wild. And then that, but it's just those kind of, uh, improvements like that kind of a club, which yeah. as long as you know what you're getting into, mm -hmm. you could prepare for it. Yeah. So I would say 
you know, yes, these are still going to happen, these type of games, mm -hmm. but at least over the next few, you know, years, hopefully, that a lot of those scores are going to start to lessen and be yeah. a little bit more closer, closer just margins. because of the competition. But uh, just to kind of recap the six-pack preview that we usually do for the USA clubs. Love those. Uh, so <laughs> it's all amateur clubs, D1 through D4. Uh, we, we try to pick the best and most exciting games to look forward to this upcoming weekend, and this is just a recap from those previous games. So, oh, and this was the post-holiday five-pack. Oh, yeah. So if anyone knows a, a five-pack, it's right. basically you buy a six-pack and then one goes missing. But mm -hmm. So this one, unfortunately, uh, one of the D2 women's clubs um, were unable to play, had to cancel because of numbers. So Still this early in the season. Right, still yeah. early in the season. So this is the five-pack. Uh, just to kind of recap, like I mentioned, for the men's D1, the Dallas Harlequins play the Austin Blacks. The Blacks came with a victory 63-5. to And women's D2, Dallas Rugby, took on Dallas Athletic. And Dallas Athletic came away with a 40 to nothing victory. Men's D2, Woodlands versus Houston United. Houston came away with a 26-12 victory. Women's D2, the San Antonio Riveters. I like that. I know. Susie the Riveter. <laughs> hey. She's even got the gun salute in the logo. I love it. And versus, they took on the Bay Area Rugby, the BARC. Uh, San Antonio came away with a victory 24-15. to And then finally, in the men's D3, Corpus Christi Crabs. I love that one, too. <laughs> Careful, uh, your nerd is showing. <laughs> versus the McAllen Knights. Uh, the Crabs came away with that victory, 52-27. to 27. And then for all of you who, or for all the clubs who are just beginning into your season, please remember to update your CMS through USA Rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, you know, for, that helps us a lot with scores, scheduling, any updates, yeah. and, uh, anything that we need to know, we'll let the public know. So continue to update those for us, please. And then I guess, too, like, if you guys know that you have an exciting game coming up, you know, maybe a cross-town, cross-country rivalry or anything of those sorts, let us know. You know, find the email and mm -hmm. let us know ahead of time. And Chris can add that to his little Friday six pack, and you might get your own shout out. You don't know. I'm excited for that. I am too. And so, like Jess mentioned, please email if you know any cool storylines or uh, you know matchups taking place in the upcoming weekends. Email us at podcast at usa rugby. Again, mm -hmm. that's podcast at usa rugby. Here's our next topic here for you. Really cool news. Staying within the the yeah. club side of things, uh, we have. Uh, a potential new area and space to build a professional rugby stadium in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, this is news to me, and uh, I saw this on the notes that Chris wanted to talk about, and I was just <laughs> kind of like, wait a second, we're going to get a new rugby stadium, hopefully, fingers crossed. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty cool. So where are we at with, like, the process of that? So originally, uh, it, it went to the council voting last year. Okay. Uh, the, the vote uh, was was not voted upon. Actually, it was a tie 7-7 seven, seven vote, oh, so it did not pass. So they went to re-vote on it uh, in the past few weeks from now. Uh, the proposal was originally to build a 3,500-seat multi-purpose stadium in Reverchon Park site in Dallas. Sorry if I'm butchering that. <laughs> Reverchon Park. Uh, and then now it was approved by city council with 11 of the 15 members wow. voting in approval. Okay, so we had four people changing their minds. That's yep, exciting. four people changing their minds. And then uh, the proposal, uh, which was passed, will cover the cost of renovation of its entirety with an agreement to lease the land from the city. So no money will actually be taken from the taxpayers in using this. This will be from other uh, from other revenue sources as well. So uh, to kind of wrap that up, so the result does not officially guarantee the construction, but it does kind of foothold a place for best next steps and from what we've seen in the past with stadium or sorry with cities getting approvals this usually leads to the stadium being built and it's really exciting because uh, major league rugby has been wanting to get a dallas team and it looks like they're going to be on track for uh hitting that mark in 2021 so congrats to dallas that's awesome and looking forward to seeing the progress of that renovation and then kind of like the uh, the uplifting message or like the positiveness that you could see from the city getting was, a professional rugby I mean, team. I was going to say, based on the last couple of things that we've talked about, I'm sensing a big Texas theme here. You know, they've had a bunch of games going on in yep. their season. Granted, they do have a little bit nicer weather than we might have out here to start their season early. But, you know, you add in those exciting games, those um, upcoming narrowing of margin victories and now a potential stadium with a potential new MLR team on the rise, like – that's pretty cool. Right. I mean, it's 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 just interesting to see how all of that kind of correlates together, and it starts that little snowball effect. So, I don't know, exciting to see what's 
what the big Texas is going to bring us yeah, and what's right? next for them. So keep up the good work, guys. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. We're not going to do a Texas podcast every <laughs> single week, but it seems like the Red River showing up. They're doing something up. good. they got to get the shout out. Like, exactly. Let's keep, you know, give credit where credit's due. So. 100%. Anyway, so speaking of giving credit where credit's due, uh, just to give you guys uh, kind of a heads up of what's upcoming for some, some cool tournaments, the Coral Sevens. Uh, have been the press release has been released officially on our mm -hmm. website. You could check out that article. Uh, but just to kind of give you an update, what's going down? This is going to be an invitational tournament taking place in January 16th through the 17th. So this upcoming this, weekend, this, yeah, that's like in the next couple days. Yep, this upcoming weekend. And where is this at? Uh, well, this is going to be taking place in. Oof, sorry. I know. No, nope, that's all you. <laughs> yep. Uh, so Luaka Park in Sigatoka, Fiji. 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 So, <laughs> nice. again, this is the best uh, American interpretation I can of, of these cities, but it's at Lawaka Park in Sigatoka, Fiji. Yeah, so, so if you're in the area, maybe go and check that out. And if you're not, it's going to be streamed live on Facebook for free. So yep. if you're like me and want to hang out in your PJs and sweatpants onesie all weekend long, you can check that out, and it's a nice win-win, with your maybe with your morning cup of coffee. Exactly. So please, like Jess had mentioned, it's going to be streaming live on Facebook.com slash Fiji's Coral Coast 7s. We're obviously going to put the link at the bottom for you to check it out. But uh, this is going to be featuring 44 invitational teams, uh, men's, women's, and yeah. youth events. Uh, but yeah, it should be really exciting. Obviously, some fun in the sun and just tossing the old pill around in Fiji is <laughs> yeah. always a good time. And so. our, our men's Falcons will be there. Yes. Um, and yeah, like he said, the roster is out online. I mean, we've got, taking a look at this, a couple of returning players, a couple new, you know, up and coming talent. And with 44 invitational teams, it's going to be pretty exciting to watch. So and it's going to be cheer our boys on. Right? And it's going to be wild to see the locals you know, taking Ugh. so much pride in that tournament and seeing exactly how they move the ball around and yeah. what kind of style of play they bring and, and how we adapt to it. So oh, it's going to be – the energy is going to just be palpable. Like hometown crowd, like all these teams, right? lovely weather. Yeah. You know, might have to just buy myself a little one-way ticket. And well, <laughs> go find me at the bottom go on of the board. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Um, also, this past weekend, we had yet another successful beach rugby tournament, and this one was in Hollywood Beach um, over in Florida. So uh, if you're not familiar with the kind of beach rugby initiative that we've been doing, basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It's beach rugby. I mean, you're outside, you're in the sand, you're still running around hitting people, throwing the old pill around, as Chris likes to yeah. call it. Um, there's a nice inflatable field, and it's something that we're really excited about. We've had quite a few successful tournaments. One thing that um, I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of is it does have like a cash prize for the winning team. So um, looks like this year we had a thousand dollars were went to the winners of the men and women's team. The senior women's team from Phoenix walked away with a grand. Like that's I mean that's a lot of money, <laughs> right? <laughs> and we had Boca Raton was the repping for the men and they took away the big W. Oh. Men's youth Boynton. I don't where is Boynton Nada? Is that a, Boynton. Uh, Boynton? Boynton? I don't know. Shout out to Boynton. Shout out to Boynton. If you're from Boynton, please reach out. Let us know. <laughs> um, and then we had the Wellington Wim Wizards from the women's youth. So we have senior side, youth side. Like, there's usually a touch division. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's fun for everybody, whether you're a returning player, you know, trying to retire player, because we all know quite a few of those that have retired three or four times and then come back and, you know, it's, you can't break that habit. So um, if you're interested in looking at upcoming beach tournaments or hosting your own tournament, registering for one, basically if you're just interested, go to beach.usarugby.org and all of that information is going to be online and it's pretty exciting. I haven't been able to actually get myself to one yet, but I'm planning on it upcoming, hopefully. I've been keeping an eye on the calendar. We're going to mm -hmm. see how my schedule works, the budget works, and all of that. But, I mean, you're on a beach, you're playing rugby with your favorite homies. Like, what else do you need? Nothing. Right. Oh, and remember, since it is on beach, low impact on the it joints. Is. Yeah, but then you got to get sand everywhere. Yeah, so, okay. you know, you weigh those pros and cons. <laughs> whatever whatever floats your boat, literally, because you're on the beach. <laughs> would you rather get would rather get those little uh, turf nuggets in your shoes and all up in <sighs> your, your equipment or sand? You know, I don't think I like that question because I don't think I would want either, but I've gotten used to the turf. I'm going to go with, uh, but sand is easier to sweep up. I don't know. I'm going to say neither. Neither? Hidden answer number C. <laughs> Hidden answer just likes it all natural fields. Yeah. So. I wouldn't say no to a nice tan, though, hanging out on the beach. I mean, that's pretty fun. That's that, the, that the downside of running around in winter is you're just kind of 
you get yeah you become you, the Edward Cullen of the rugby world. You get paler actually <laughs> yeah. the more you play outside in the winter. This is true. This is true. <laughs> but yeah, super exciting. So keep an eye out for that. And again, follow us on social media. We'll be able to keep giving those shout outs and letting you guys know. We'll set show up some some cool pictures and oh yeah, shout outs where shout oh, yeah. outs are due. Some cool pictures and cool videos actually will be posted right now for your enjoyment. Hey. <laughs> All right, up next is a pretty cool topic. We got the regional regional cup tournaments. Excuse me, she makes me laugh so much. <laughs> we got the regional cup tournaments up next. The RCT, for those of you who don't know, um, the locations and dates have been posted for 2020. Um, these are going to be in five locations throughout the summer between June 6th and the 28th. Like I mentioned, in five different locations. This is really just a premier opportunity for those who are trying to make those higher club teams or those age grade teams to get noticed by collegiate coaches or the high performance, like I mentioned. Um, it's a really cool for collegiate recruitment as well. There's going to be lots of coaches there, lots of school directors. Uh, so if you're a high school, if you're a youth and you want to play at the, the higher levels, uh, please check out the, the, our website or the press release, sorry, that I had mentioned that we put out. Uh, the following uh, RCT tournaments will be taking place in ooh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, June 6th through 7th. We got the Centennial, Colorado, June 20th through the 21st. Yakima, Washington, June 27th to the 28th. Springfield, Massachusetts, also that same weekend, June 27th, 28th. And Madison, Wisconsin, that same weekend, June 27th, 28th. So, again, please sign up, register if you want to play, and it's kind of a free-for-all. Yeah. You don't have to be dedicated to a team or a club. If you want to go as a free agent, that's okay. If You, you know, all ages, uh, I believe, over the age of 14 to 19, so sign up for those. It's going to be really cool. And, again, if you want to kind of go to the next level of rugby and see what, you know, opportunities could come or if you can make it to those teams this is a great opportunity for you to do so so if you have questions on that again send us an email to the podcast at usa.rugby um, but also more importantly reach out to your local state rugby organization that's your sro so that's your rugby illinois your rugby colorado mm -hmm. your socal youth rugby and they'll be able to kind of let you know what's looking and what it's looking like in your area what teams are looking like what the best practices are and more importantly, how to get registered, get in good standing, so that you're actually eligible, eligible to compete in these competitions. So um, don't hesitate to reach out. Right. And also, these this is men's and women's yeah. divisions as well. It's not just guys. Come on. We're, is this 2020? We're, yeah. We're all inclusive We're all over inclusive here. here. So, um, yes, this is men's and women's. Uh, so please, everyone, please check it out. This is a really cool opportunity. I know this is available when I was playing when I was that young. I would have hopped on this in a second. But. And I didn't play when I was that young, but now I wish I did. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Well, yeah, so we'll put those links at the bottom for you you guys to go check out and register. Uh, but yeah, 
right. All right, next up we have the Premiership Rugby Scholarship opportunity that has been offered the last couple of years by our Training and Education Department again. Honestly, they're doing some pretty cool stuff over there that I'm really excited about. They're um, all-stars, honestly. The entire team, they work tirelessly. The dream team, if you will. The dream team. With they, a capital D and a capital T, yeah. underline, <laughs> italicized, and three exclamation points at the end. That's their shout-out for the week. <laughs> um yeah, so if you're not familiar with what the Premiership application is, basically you get to go abroad and learn from different coaches and organizations over there. So basically, In England. In England, yes. Yep. So best practices of whatever they're doing and how it's working. I know a couple people that have done it before. Mm -hmm. They have raved about it for weeks and days, and they come back and they have pages of notes and ideas and just like, you know, I'm a cliched person, but like, their eyes are just like lit up. Like they're just super yeah. excited with everything that they've kind of taken away. So if it sounds like something that you're interested in and you've been coaching in your local community, definitely um, take a look at this. And it's a pretty easy application process. Mm -hmm. All you do is you make as you make a video of yourself explaining why you think this would benefit you and your team, your organization, whatever it is that you're affiliated with. Um, submit that to our training and education department and they'll be making some uh, – reviews of those, letting you know whether or not you're accepted, and that is happening, they're traveling in April, so right. pretty qu quickly, so if it's something you're even remotely interested in, take a look at the article, we'll put the link up and everything, and uh, get your application in, because these spots fill up very quickly, they're starting to get more and more competitive. Mm -hmm. Right, So and there will be two trips, yep. so one will be taking place in April, and then the second will be in October, mm -hmm. so there will, and again, keep plenty applying, of opportunities. plenty of opportunities, if you don't make the April trip, hopefully you can make the October trip. Uh, but again, last year, to kind of give you guys some stats, 55 coaches from 31 yeah. states uh, were accepted. They went over to England and basically, like Jess was mentioning, just discovering what it's like to not only uh, live, play, mm -hmm. coach professional premiership rugby, but actually understand what it takes, mm -hmm. right? We're like here over in America. Uh, yes, the MLR is really improving that for all clubs and the WPL as well. But we definitely need more insight, more perspectives, mm -hmm. and just more experience in that. And then this just gives us so much wealth of knowledge to learn and then to take back yep. here to the States and then kind of let that grow and take root within the local clubs, colleges, and just to see that con continued improvement uh, within all players, which I'm really excited for. And what's better than hanging out with 54 of cool rugby people in England talking nothing but rugby for, I think it's two weeks, something like that. So two weeks straight, right. You really can't go wrong. Get your application in for sure. <laughs> Pretty, yeah, it's a wonderful time and really cool. So a lot, uh, some big time names in the premiership yeah. are going to be partnering uh, with, with this. Uh, actually, it's first delivered in partnership with Friends of the British Council. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, give them a quick shout out to helping make all this come true. Um, partnering with us here at USA Rugby, but the actual premiership clubs that will be taking place will be the Lesser Tigers, Northampton Saints, London Wasps, the Saracens, London Irish, and the Harlequins. Yeah. I can't wrap my brain around that, it. <laughs> oh, man. Just, and then potentially to run into, uh, and I know this is kind of at the end of their season because the he Heineken Cup will, uh, playoffs will be taking place in April and May. But you could easily be rubbing shoulders with some of England's best players and Welsh. And, well, I know it is taking place in England, but you could have Irish, Scottish, Welsh, Americans, English players yeah. that you could be rubbing shoulders with and gaining more of that perspective. So this is a really cool opportunity. Uh, this is an annual thing, and hopefully this will be here in place for years to come. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so we can't wait and see. Again, we're going to throw the links at the bottom, and please register or... Uh, apply for one of those positions. And like Jess mentioned, there's going to mm -hmm. be a multitude of things that you're going to have to input, but it's a real easy process, and you know they should get back to you very shortly on that one. Yeah, so get excited. <laughs> get excited. We know we are. <laughs> okay, welcome back. Um, so we do have a bit of a special treat for you. So we always talk about going ahead and reaching out to us if you know of someone doing something cool or you yourself are doing something cool in the rugby community. We actually had a really great conversation with um, a new foundation called Ruck ALS with Tripper. Mm -hmm. And um, it was he's doing some pretty exciting stuff. So take a look at that. We've got a bunch of links up for you, but take a gander. Here we have a very unique and special guest with us. We have Tripper Povar from the Ruck ALS Foundation organization. Tripper, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. 
No, of course, our pleasure. And it's such a really cool organization that we will be talking about in extents. But um, for a little bit uh, to give the people, what's like your rugby background and experience? And uh, like, have you played, coached, whereabouts in the States or abroad? Uh, rugby background's uh, pretty good. I was first introduced when I was five. We were living in Hong Kong. Um, my brother actually played for the home team. He had kids that stayed there and kids that went abroad. So that was my first introduction. I first played um, in high school when I lived in France and played off and on uh, ever since then, mostly on uh, for about 27 years. Uh, coached a little, refed a little, but yeah. So extensive, I would say, pretty much yeah, sums been it up. A lot of fun. Yeah. Love, love rugby. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. Love that. and yeah, it seems like you kind of bounced around a little bit as a kid, but you were able to get a lot of the international experience before coming over to the States full time. Exactly. Do you kind of have a highlight of your personal rugby career, whether coaching, playing, anything like that, anything that kind of sticks out? One was, uh, you know, you play as long as I have. Um, you've played every position on the field at some point or another, mm -hmm. and uh uh, a few years ago, I actually got to start uh, my one and only game at Scrum Half. <laughs> oh, sweet. Hey, Did man. you love so, it or no, hate nothing it? Like a, nothing like at the time, I weighed about 330 pounds, so nothing <laughs> like a huge Scrum Half running around. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. And coming from two Scrum Halves, we can totally appreciate someone getting feisty in there. So I'm Yeah, we, we walked out that first Scrum. The other guy was, you know, five, six, maybe a buck 20. He's like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I think I signed up for the wrong spot right now. I'm in over my head somehow, but that's awesome. Well, good. Glad to hear it. Um, so Tripper, with, you know, your extensive rugby knowledge and background and involvement, and you reached out to Chris and I kind of with your organization, Ruck ALS. So mm -hmm. you want to kind of tell us a little bit what that is and kind of yeah. how that happened? So Ruck is a charitable foundation um, geared towards helping, um, the rugby family and hopefully beyond um, that are afflicted with ALS. I mean, there's already a lot of good organizations and things that help bring awareness and money for research for ALS. Um, a lot of people are familiar with like the ice bucket challenge, mm -hmm. um, but there's not a whole lot of things that help with the here and now. Um, and as far as I know, nothing that's centered for the rugby community. And when I talk about the here and now, um, things are like helping with vacations or events helping create lasting memories with the family helping with medical bills helping with home modifications things like that and so that's what we aim to do oh, i love that that is that is wonderful to hear so um again uh, such a great organization to start and to really kind of continue to implement within the states not only from a rugby perspective but from everyone who is affected with this um, how did this organization come about? Like, how did it begin? What was its origins? Um, well, for that, got to understand, uh, my dad actually had ALS and passed away in 2012 from ALS. And yeah. so for years, been kind of one of the back of my mind, want to do something, but I wasn't quite sure what to do, how to do it, anything like that. And last year, uh, my rugby coach was diagnosed with ALS and wow. you know, a bit of a sucker punch. And, but and having gone what I'd gone through with my dad and knowing what he was going to experience, it all kind of came together, seeing the void of those things that we're trying to fill and just wanting to help him and wanting to help um, you know, the rugby family and, you know, everyone else out there that's been affected with it. That, that was, you know, the genesis of the uh, ALS, the Ruck ALS Foundation. Cool. Wow. Thank you for that. And yeah, it's, it's such unfortunate to hear, um, you know, again, sorry about the passing of your father and um, the, uh, the affection that it has with uh, your, your coach. And uh, I know a lot of people out there could probably resonate and uh, compare with your stories as well. And hopefully this, um, you know, hits their heartstrings and, and we can hopefully tug on that a little bit and, and get the word out about this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you reached out to us, I started doing a little bit of research on kind of your foundation and just ALS in general. Um, I have a couple of family friends that have been diagnosed with it as well. So I've done the walks in the past and you know, tried to be involved as like much as I can. And I think one thing that you can probably speak more on this is something that really surprises people is that the majority of people diagnosed with this don't have a family history. It just kind of is something that comes from nowhere. And it has a very, I don't want to say rapid lifespan for it, that it just comes and happens pretty quickly. So can you kind of expound on that a little bit more? 
Uh, yeah, majority of the cases are idiopathic, which means they don't really know how, when, or why. Um, mm -hmm. There are a few trends out there, but I don't bore anybody with that. Um, but yeah, the usual thing is diagnosis to death um, is usually about two to five year span. And we've had, you know, there's some famous people in different types of ALS where they last a lot longer, Stephen Hawking, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for the most part, it hits you, it hits you hard, it hits you fast, um, takes a toll on, you know, the family, um, you know, the finances, you know, the emotional states, everything. So that's why we want to try to really the big focus we want to have is that memory. So while we can, you know, there's going to be so much tough stuff. We want to provide some good stuff to hold on to. Yeah. Definitely. So, and you know, you mentioned you did some home modifications and you kind of have like those last trip, happy memory vacations that you plan along with some other things. So mm -hmm. what kind of is the process that goes along if someone is looking to reach out to you guys for help? Like how do you kind of navigate that? So best way is through the website. Um, okay. And then, well, so we are new, we're trying to grow. We've got, uh, I'm actually trying to reach out to people in the rugby community and get more what we call pals, uh, people with ALS. Um, and we've got, I want to set up grants for, um, or even assist with the planning of those vacations. Cool. Um, I'm working with uh, the folks at, um, uh, who are organizing uh, the MLR weekend in Vegas to see if we can't do something there both with the uh, memory making side of things uh, for people and the getting our name out there and possibly even fundraising also with LA7s, uh, trying to do what we can there. But yeah, reach out to me through the website. That's the best way uh, that'll come to me directly. Um, and then I get back out and we can figure out what we can do to um, set you up with grants for you know, travel or home modifications or medical bills or whatever the needs are. That's awesome. I love to hear that. And I'm, I'm glad that you guys are making the moves to kind of broaden those horizons, you know, being as newer as you are. And, and yeah. again, we'll do all that we can within our power over here at USA Rugby and to, Appreciate to it. at least share the word, mm -hmm. uh, get some conversations going and have the people uh, go and contact you, which we will put the links down at the bottom for uh, Ruck ALS Foundation. And of course, your email to contact you directly if you'd like. Um, but yeah, we'll, we're going to do all that we can within our power to help you with that. Really appreciate that. Of course, man. Of course. Yeah. So um, you kind of talked about people getting involved and, you know, looking for volunteers and obviously you're this main kind of point person for all this. Do you have a team that you've kind of grown with or are you still kind of in, again, early flexible stages or what does your kind of community organization look like that you're working with? Uh, still in the early flexible stages. Uh, I've been kind of grassroots efforts uh, right now. Uh, the local rugby team's uh, been a good uh, resource. Some of my personal contacts have really helped out. Mm -hmm. um, still trying to find those right kind of key personnel to so all the advice I get for that for creative foundation is you know get the right board of directors with you um, mm -hmm. so trying to find those people who are you know philanthropic um, love rugby know something about um, healthcare maybe have a tie to ALS or you know hit maybe a couple of those boxes and bring that team together and that way we can work synergetically together to you know, move the foundation forward yeah um yeah i love that that's awesome great great so what um immediately of course donating getting involved any way that the public um can do that i know it would be greatly appreciated but what would be kind of like the priority for you of what the organization needs either currently or within the near foreseeable future uh, well, you've touched on the big thing. So getting involved in donating. So getting involved, um, like you touched on, um, if you know someone with ALS, get a hold of me. Um, mm -hmm. Let me so I can start that dialogue with them, see where they need and start to arrange that help. So that's number one. Number two, <clears throat> if you can volunteer, let me know. So if we do end up getting to do something at MLR or LA7s and we've got manpower. Uh, and the third one for getting involved, admittedly, I am horrible at social media. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. uh, like the Facebook page, like the Instagram page, follow, share, whatever it is that you're supposed to do to, you know, get those things out there. All the things. <laughs> all, yeah, all do, the do those things. things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that's the involvement that uh, I could really benefit from. Um, and then, of course, I mean, yeah, money makes the world go round. Um, mm -hmm. I've set it up that um, if someone donates something, they say, hey, I need – you know, I want coach to have this hundred dollars, this hundred dollars is for coach. 
all that hundred dollars goes to coach stuff for coach. Mm -hmm. um, none of that goes to any administrative fees or anything like that for the foundation. Wow. The foundation is just all on other donations or fundraising efforts, stuff like that. Okay. So donations through the website, you know, or Venmo, we're on Facebook charities, Amazon smile, or what's a lot of fun is having teams um, do team events, whether it's a rugby tournament, bowling tournament, golf tournament, and you know, make us the name recipient. Uh, the local team did that. And that was awesome. And I'm cool. I, I'd be happy to you know, give advice on how to make that happen. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess if anyone that's watching is interested in this, reaching out to you, you kind of have those resources and, you know, on a case by case basis, what works best with them. It sounds like there's a lot of possibility. I mean, yeah. everyone wants to get involved and not everyone has extra money lying around, but sometimes people might have that time and that team and right. those personal exactly. connections. So that's cool. I mean, I like that. It's like a very well-rounded 360 view. Yep. So. And, and, and kind of piggybacking on that, you had mentioned uh, setting up uh, either if it's like a charitable fundraising game or a tournament or anything like that. Um, that actually sounds really cool. And I know in Denver here, we've been trying to get some touch games going or at least a league. Mm -hmm. So I feel like once we do, this would be a really cool organization to, uh, you know, attach each other at the hip and try to help each other push forward with that. So that would be phenomenal. Thank and you. so I, I know this is, you know, uh, within the works, super right early, now. super yeah. early within the works, but Hey, um, you know, you, you heard it first here, Tripper, like we're going to do everything we can to help <laughs> attach that. And then anything USA rugby related, hopefully Ruck ALS could be right there in the same ship with us. That is awesome. Thank you. So I do want to point out one thing. So if you could maybe show off your jacket a little bit more, because I know I've been admiring it. And for everybody watching, if you go to the website, don't worry, we'll post that on there. There's a nice little swag section. And correct me if I'm wrong, but all proceeds from that go to you guys. Is that right? Yes. Um, all proceeds go to the foundation. Um, and I will make sure that links and everything on the website are good to go. <laughs> awesome. Well, perfect. Well, I mean, I know I'm interested in it i like the color we got the orange microphone oh, yeah. right here to help support so yeah just trying to increase oh. that <laughs> finger gun see yeah, it's catching on it yeah. is <laughs> it makes the world go round. i think we've, i think we've started a revolution <laughs> that's right but, but yes um uh, again yeah the very uh unique uh standout color i feel like that could go a really long way within the marketing of you know your website and everything like that so well chosen uh, I know um, a few other organizations that are trying to do the same, but we're going to put all we can behind Ruck ALS and it's great message. It's great um, what it's trying to accomplish within the community, not only rugby, but uh, Tripper, if you uh, have any shout outs, if you have anyone that you want to kind of uh, give honest to, the, the table is yours right now, my friend. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> not to well, put you on the spot. Yeah, put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> Uh, well, first, I mean, you guys, thank you. Um, this has been huge and uh, looking forward to working with you guys in the future. Yep. Um, um, big shout out and um, yeah, wishing the best always for uh, you know, it's Coach Pulver. He was the impetus that got this thing going. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the, the local team, uh, Boise United Rugby, um, oh. they were very instrumental in letting me do this. And as Actually, it was a tough step because I was president of the club and stepped down so I could focus on the foundation. And that was really hard for me. Yeah. Um, but they've been nothing but supportive. That's awesome. So you guys are still involved with each other and kind of supporting each other both on and off yep. the field? Very I love much. that. That's what, I mean, that's what rugby is and that's what we're here for. So <laughs> all unity. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. And uh, again, for we're going to plug in those links at the bottom for everyone who's watching and listening. Uh, it's Ruck ALS organization. And I know you said social media is not your thing, but we're still going to plug in the Facebook, Instagram, I'm gonna Twitter. I'm going to go and like you right on the, yeah, the we're, social media we're, right now. So we're we're going to like you hold. right now. But we'll, we'll put those links at the bottom and the account at name so that everyone can go follow you, like you, share uh, what you have to provide to the public. And we'll, we'll make sure to do that and put our due diligence in uh, fighting this wonderful cause. Don't worry. Follow. Just look for that little orange rhino. Ooh, uh, popped up right there. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and can you, the, the rhino logo, is there a special meaning behind that or just something cool that you wanted? Um, I was trying to, because before when I, when I first created the foundation, it was just a, like, uh, a plate just said, you know, Ruck ALS Foundation. Yeah. And kind of boring. I wanted something that imbued something strong, something that would fight, something, you know, that wouldn't oh, give up. Yeah. And... I wasn't sure, and then when I saw the rhino, I've always had a, I was I always liked rhinos, and so kind of all worked together, kind of came together. 
Oh, I love that. That makes me really excited. Also, I just love rhinos. So yeah. <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> but. but yeah, cool. so Tripper, uh, again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Not only what you're doing for ALS, but within the rugby community as well. And uh, hopefully this is not a one-time thing. Hopefully nope. we could get you as a recurring guest on and continue supporting that message of Ruck ALS. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, it was really nice talking with you and keep watching and spread the news. Nice. <laughs> yeah, the news, there right? it is. <laughs> all right. I well, love it. everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Again, we're going to put all the links in the bomb so you can contact Trippy yourself. Uh, please donate to the organization, like, follow them on social media, do everything you can to help this out. Um, but again, Tripper, thank you so much. And for everyone out there, thank you for joining and tuning in. Bye. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I know I really enjoyed that conversation. Um, Tripper, he's such a wonderful human mm -hmm. being. What he's doing for ALS, it's awareness and it's fundraising. Yeah. And then just incorporating that within the rugby community here in the States. I, I feel like it's a no brainer to be a part of and to continue helping the success of that organization yeah. moving forward. And uh, we're just really excited not only to have gotten to talk to Tripper, uh, but to see how we could kind of take this to the next level and help this organization out. Yeah. So follow him on social media, mm -hmm. reach out if you guys have questions for him, any way that you want to get involved. Sky's the limit in opportunity here to kind of build this program, this foundation. and. Mm -hmm basically build each other up in the process. So we're really excited about right. that. And next up on the list, I'm actually really excited to talk about this one. This is something that went live last Thursday. Um, so we have a brand new Women's 15s Foundation based um, and created by our Women's 15s program. So our national team members, specifically Alicia Washington and Christine Summer. Um, I know both of them. They're truly phenomenal human beings. Alicia and was phenomenal rugby players. Let's, oh, well, let's put that uh, on I the mean, table that just too. goes without saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're crazy good. And, you know, I think they're just really excited to kind of build up this 15s foundation. So um, in a nutshell, it basically is to help support the women's 15s national team and mm -hmm. their program. So what a lot of people don't know is a lot of these athletes are pay to play. So, you know, from traveling to different tryout camps to high performance camps to actual tournaments and matches and basically everything in between, a lot of these players have to take time off of work, still put in the money for that and it does become a bit of a financial burden among plenty of other things on these players that mm -hmm. all they want to do is play the sport that we all love and represent their country. Um, so, you know, they have plenty of options to get involved, but easy stuff you can do right now, follow them on social media, like, share, post, comment, you know, tag other people in it. We'll just try and spread that web and make sure get everybody aware. You can become a monthly donor, I think is the easiest way mm -hmm. to actually help them sustainable. A lot of people think, oh, I have to donate $500 for it to be a meaningful impact. Nope, if you, $10 a month, you know, that's two less coffees a day. I mean, some of us can't give up coffee, but if you really put your effort in, you can try. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a pretty cool foundation that they've started to just really help elevate their program and just make everyone give them the opportunities and eliminate the barriers to participation. And I'm really excited to see it because it's something that I know a lot of my friends and inner circle and teammates they struggle with it and mm -hmm. anything that we as like the general public, the community and the people that just really want to support these athletes can do, we have the opportunity to do so now. So um, give them a like, give them a shout out and reach out with any questions. And again, uh, Jess, you couldn't be more right. And I'm so excited for this to actually yeah. be taking place and actually be, you know, uh, more prevalent within the rugby community and of uh, bettering ourselves of more of like on an equal standpoint yeah. and, and like literally linking arm in arm and going into the new decade and saying like, this is how it's going to be. And, and we really need to improve both teams equally at the same time. Um, but yeah, like she had mentioned, please go check them out. We're going to put everything at the bottom for you uh, to, you know, the Facebook and uh, Twitter and also USA rugby uh, be the impact. Uh, you could also contact hashtag. hashtag be the impact. Hashtag be the impact. That's right. <laughs> you can also contact Emily Bidwell and and or Chris Reed. And for more information on the foundation, visit uh, xvfoundation.com. That's 15foundation.com, but it's xvfoundation.com. XV. And then please contact Alicia or Christine at xvfounder at gmail.com. Again, we'll put that at the bottom for you. But really excited to see what kind of uh, momentum and mm -hmm. what kind of financials 
that the public can raise uh, for this team and, yeah. and for this foundation. So this is really cool to see. And again, even beyond financials, kind of similarly with the Ruck ALS Foundation that we talked about, something as simple as even liking them on social media, like all of that goes a very long way in the grand right. scheme of things. You know, we've also talked about if you have a practice venue or a hosting facilities for any sort of potential event that we could hold or that for teams that hold their practices and their regional training camps, anything like that, if you know of any way to help out, sky's the limit. So seriously, so don't, don't hold back. No, I, we won't. Yeah. Hopefully you guys will <laughs> Never. <laughs> Again, yes, just like I mentioned, easy, something as easy as like and a share, but please, please help out in this foundation and contact those people that we had mentioned. The Impact is a holistic initiative to galvanize the community to support the Women's 15s program. It's not just about asking for money, it's philanthropy, corporate sponsorships, hosting events, hosting assemblies, and also soliciting grants. Through your donations, the players won't need to worry about plane tickets, getting to camps, loss of wages, and making sure we have enough staff. You will be the impact that makes sure we have a thriving program. Women's 15s is your community. They play for your clubs, they coach your athletes, they referee your games, they run your programs. We're creating a platform where women and young girls can understand that their idea of being a professional rugby player is not a dream, it's reality. And that comes with funding. It's time for us to all be part of the solution, working towards a sustainable future. For players to just be players. We need you to help us get to the podium. Get involved. Be the impact. So here, very quickly, is just going to be a, a few of our sponsors, and then we'll turn right after that. So to kind of wrap up things here, folks, uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us on Between the Post number two so far for us to do. Yes. Um, but yeah, some things to really bring uh, to your attention is our community staff uh, has been working tirelessly in the past mm -hmm. few months of improving our Rookie Rugby website and resources that we could give out to the public. And Everything is now updated. Everything is now, uh, including the resources, are now free for you to go download. It's all in PDF format. And to really kind of improve uh, youth and rookie rugby within your communities. Uh, quick shout out to Sharon Moskowitz and her team. She has been... Nice job, Sharon! Woo! <laughs> she has been absolutely mon monumental mm -hmm. in bringing all of this to fruition and, you know, kind of improving the lives of rugby or improving the scope of rugby in the United States. But Just making it easier. Making it easier for all mm -hmm. of us. Thank you again so much, Sharon. And for those of you who want to check it out, RookieRugby.com. Real simple, RookieRugby.com. And again, those resources are in the tab on the website. And some of those free resources include how to play the game, uh, game cards, skill cards, six-week coaching plans, and curriculum. All free on the resources page in RookieRugby.com. And then even if you want, uh, you know, email Sharon and give her a big old thank you. Because I know every time we pass her desk, it's almost just like, we're not worthy. <laughs> yeah. We're not worthy. <laughs> She's constantly just constantly. going at it. Um, but yeah, without her, the, the help of her and her team, this would not be possible. So please, to try to grow grassroots and youth mm -hmm. in that level, this really would help. Absolutely. Okay, so what you guys didn't see, uh, Chris actually just threw his notes everywhere, so I'm going to start off on this one. Um, but yeah, so we threw a lot of information at you guys this week. Thank you for keeping up with it. Um, you know, we were just kind of talking about it. It's the beginning of January, beginning of 2020, a new decade. We have all these teams, foundations, organizations, leadership. Everybody's gearing up for a very successful pretty much everything, whether that's your season, your year, your decade, or just your reign, whatever that might be. Um, so please keep reaching out to us with questions, comments, concerns, and shout outs. I mean, you know, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so we got a few last minute sign offs with Chris here. So take it away. So everyone, we're going to try to finish every single one of these with a friendly reminder of 
if you're not playing rugby, please go out, find a local club, uh, whether that be 15s, 7s, men's, women's, beach, touch, youth, high school, college, club. <laughs> yeah, one, two, did I, get, did I get it all? <laughs> anyway, please go find a club, and it's on usa.rugby slash find a club. We'll put those links at the bottom uh, for you to go check out. And also, with all these um, schedules about to have the floodgates open mm-hmm. for for every single division, every single level, please register your teams if you haven't, and then check membership eligibility. This is massive with Jess and helping her and her department, and it's just a huge weight off all of our shoulders if we know that your club and individuals are all legally registered. And your shoulders. And my shoulders, too. Well, just yep. everybody's. <laughs> yeah, everyone's. Everyone's. <laughs> so we're going to put those at the bottom for you to please go check it out, and please register and find your club. But anyway, Jess... Thank you so much for all you do and, oh, and joining us once again. But right everyone, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us on Between the Post. We hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you have any questions, inquiries, concerns, comments. Please e- email us. Sorry. At what, Jess? Podcast at usa.rugby. Mm-mm-mm. Set a little break. Rap so set a little break. <laughs> yeah, but that's podcast at usa.rugby. Um, hopefully a lot more show tunes are in your future and we can maybe work on our music voices and I did, I did a year of show choir, so I mean, if we need to pull those videos I was, up. I was a choir too. Holla. Tune in next week to Holla. see what this next conversation will bring you, but. I, I was a, a baritone. So oh, I see, uh, I was a tenor, which is typically a male part, but apparently I have the voice of a dude, so. You're the voice of an angel. The voice of a dude angel. The songbird of our generation. That's what they call me, the Jess Dombrowski. (laughs) So, hey, if you think we're fun, if you think this is exciting, if you like what you see, you want us to talk about something different, you don't like us, to keep that to yourself, but reach out. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you guys so much, and see you next week. Bye. (laughs)